Hi gang, I've been getting a few comments showing interest in making homemade capacitors, so I thought I'd pass on a bunch of what I've learned over the years from making my own. I'll cover low voltage capacitors in this video, and high voltage ones in a separate video. First, some basics about typical homemade capacitors. A capacitor consists of three parts. Those are two electrically conductive plates, separated by an insulating material, i.e. something that doesn't conduct electricity. We usually refer to the insulating material as a dielectric. Notice I've drawn the plates as flat rectangles, but they don't have to be. They can be any shape at all, though usually the distance between the two plates is fairly uniform throughout. Here's some samples of low voltage capacitors. Start with a sheet of ordinary aluminum foil. Put on top of that a sheet of paper. On top of that lay another sheet of metal. In this case I've got a piece of copper from a hobby store. The capacitor is the area where they overlap. Connect one lead to the aluminum foil. Connect the other lead to the piece of copper. Adjust the overlap and connect the other two ends to your circuit. Take a sheet of paper on one side, tape a piece of aluminum foil with some of the foil sticking out over the edge of the paper and to reinforce the back of that just to make it stronger. Do the same thing with another piece but notice that the tabs are facing in opposite directions. Then get a cylinder, a dowel or whatever you have. In this case I've taken an old marker and if it's metal like this one is then cover it in paper and tape just to insulate it. Next take your two pieces, overlap them like that. Take your cylinder and with the foil side of one of them facing inwards roll the pieces on the cylinder. There's your capacitor. Connect one lead to one of those tabs you made. Connect the other lead the other tab. For this one I've taken a jar and I've simply wrapped aluminum foil all the way around it. Left a little bit out so I can connect with it. On the inside now what I'd normally do is put aluminum foil. But this one has um, a small mouth here and it's hard to get the foil inside. So I'm going to do something else instead. The uh, top here I've simply made a small hole in it using my X-Acto knife and I put a bolt through it and um, Put a nut here and a nut here just to hold the bolt in place. You can put anything you want, wire or anything. Um, and this is going to go on top here. You want to make sure that your bolt goes down below the level of the foil. Next, we fill it up with uh, salty water. Put the top on. Connect one lead to the foil. Connect the other lead to the bolt sticking out of the top and then connect the other two leads to your circuit. And that's just a sample. Given that the basic parts are two plates separated by an insulator, the possibilities are endless. But there is another important consideration and that's the capacitance. When you make a capacitor you're usually trying to make one close to a certain capacitance. The unit for capacitance is farads, often written these ways. Capital MF or UF is microfarads or millionths of a farad. N farad or nanofarad is billionths of a farad. PF is picofarads or trillionths of a farad. So you can see a picofarad is quite small. Homemade capacitors are usually in the picofarad or low nanofarad range. What factors determine the capacitance? Here's the formula for a flat plate capacitor. The two things that can affect the capacitance the most are the area that the plates overlap each other and the distance between the plates. Since the area is something that's in the top part of the equation, that means the bigger the area, the bigger the capacitance, and vice versa. And since the distance is something that's in the bottom part of the equation, that means the bigger the distance, the smaller the capacitance, and vice versa. The other variable is K, or the dielectric constant, and that depends on the material. I usually do a search online for the material name and dielectric constant to find it. It's usually a value from 1 to 4. It's hard to find high dielectric constant materials that you can practically use. Water's dielectric constant is around 80, but it has impurities in it that make it somewhat conductive, and distilled water can become contaminated and conductive over time. I've tried making high dielectric constant capacitors using barium titanate, but it's hard to do unless you have a way of compressing it under high temperatures. I've tried mixing barium titanate and epoxy, and the highest I've gotten was 27. There's a link in the description to this video where you can find more about my efforts with barium titanate. By the way, the formula for the area is in square meters, and the distance is in meters. I've only ever seen the formula in metric units. Also, the dielectric constant, K, is sometimes called relative permittivity. There are different capacitance formulas for different shapes. For example, this is the one for a cylindrical capacitor where one plate is a cylinder and the other is a rod through the center of the cylinder. It also helps to have a meter that has a capacitor setting, like this one. 
This meter has a capacitance scale. It's just this uh, small symbol here for a capacitor. And you can see right now it already is reading some capacitance. And that's the capacitance of the probes. Uh, so when you make your measurement, you want to subtract that value from your measurement. Or this meter has a rel button which I can push that zeroes it out. I have a little capacitor here which is a piece of cardboard with two pieces of aluminum foil on either side. And you can see its capacitance is around 0.225 nanofarads, which is 225 picofarads. Watch what happens now when I push, squeeze the plates together. There you can see that uh, decreasing the distance between the plates increases the capacitance, as I said. Also, if you put your hand on the plate, it also has effect on the capacitance. So if you have exposed plates, be careful. Even putting your hand near can sometimes affect it. What about a variable capacitor? You might need a capacitor where you can adjust the capacitance while using it. This is a simple one I made for my How to Make a Crystal Radio video. I first cut my two plates out of aluminum foil, then wrap one around a cardboard tube from a paper towel roll, then I tape the other plate to a sheet of paper and wrap that snugly around the tube, but with it able to slide back and forth. And then I tape some wires to it. For the variable capacitor for this crystal radio, I used copper cladding. Copper cladding you can get from places like Radio Shack or other electronic stores. This one's double sided. And what I did was I cut out two pieces and then separated by them by some additional pieces and then soldered a wire to both of them to connect them electrically. So those two pieces make up one plate of the capacitor and the other plate is this additional piece that slides in between them. Now notice I'm touching it. But to help with that, this uh, piece right here is wired to the ground side of the circuit. It's always a good idea. So whichever piece you're adjusting should be wired to the ground side of the circuit if possible. Another issue is the breakdown voltage, or dielectric strength, of the dielectric. I said the dielectric is an insulator and doesn't conduct electricity, but it can physically break down or be damaged, and the spot where it breaks down can become conductive. When you buy a capacitor, the voltage that you see written on it is the breakdown voltage. If you have this problem, or want to make sure you won't, then search online for the breakdown voltage, or dielectric strength, of the material you're planning to use. It'll give you some value, like so many volts per thickness. As an example, let's say you'll be putting 550 volts across the capacitor, and the dielectric you're planning on using has a breakdown voltage of 240 volts per mil. One mil is one thousandth of an inch. 550 volts divided by 240 volts per mil is a thickness of 2.3 mil. So to be safe and to make life easier, round that up to a thickness of 3 mil, or 3 one thousandths of an inch. That's still pretty thin, so maybe even go with thicker. As a quick final note, the dielectric constant and the breakdown voltage vary with frequency and temperature, but you'll see that in the various tables you find online. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you find this helpful. Check out my YouTube channel, RimStar.org, for more videos like this. That includes a video about making high voltage capacitors. The one where I talk about capacitors for crystal radios is in my crystal radio troubleshooting and tips video. And lifters, like in my how to make a lifter video, are basically high voltage capacitors that leak on purpose using a bare thin wire. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question, or comment below. Bye for now.